We're coming to the last session for the morning, and it's with great pleasure I'm introducing Steph again. <laughs> and I can tell you, honestly and genuinely, I've been waiting for this presentation for a whole year. We almost had it last year when a disaster struck and one presenter couldn't, couldn't come. And Steph said, well, we could talk about sex. I said, oh, go for it. <laughs> so, now we are. Okay, and uh, I have actually changed what, what I'm doing today slightly in that uh, I'm not going to talk about sex addiction. Um, having mentioned working with sex addiction online, um, I'm hoping that you'll want to hear about that one next year. <laughs> um, but I know. But I am. Um, I want to talk about working with uh, sexual problems online in general because one of the things I do know is that um, clients do talk about their sexual problems online. Um, what we need as therapists is to be willing and sufficiently knowledgeable to work with those. Um, you know, I've used the, the well-worn phrase, no sex please, we're British, no sex please, we're counsellors. Because what I do know is that of all of the counsellor trainings that there are in the UK, and I think there's something like over 20,000 different counsellor training courses, 90% of them do not offer any input about sex or sexuality. And to me, I can't believe it. Because it, for me, it's such an essential part of the work that we do. If we're working with adults or we're working with adolescents, one of the defining events in our lives is when we become sexual. It's a transition within a family when the child of the family becomes sexual. Now, it's, it's such a significant part of life. And of course, working as I do largely with relationships and couple relationships, then um, I couldn't work with a couple relationship and not talk about their sex lives. But I can remember a long time ago, um, a couple coming to see me who, who said, we've just had six months of couple therapy. And I said, okay, that's really interesting. And um, I'm just wondering what you think I can offer that six months of working with a couple therapist hasn't. And they, and they looked at one another and said, well, it's really simple. The very first session we had with that counsellor, we told her we'd got a sex problem. And for six months, every time we mentioned sex, the counsellor changed the subject. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope that there are lots of, lots of enlightened people in this room who uh, aren't going to change the subject just because somebody mentions the word sex. Um, but, you know, why is there no sex input? into um, many of the counsellor trainings. Uh, I, I did a few years ago, I had um, one of my students uh, in, uh, on course of couple therapy was head of a large counselling department in the university. And, and she said, Steph, it sort of hit me like a bullet. Said, We've got courses in our university from basic counselling skills to people doing PhDs in counselling, and we don't mention sex in any of those courses. What is that about? Like, well, yeah, what is it about? Uh, is it lack of knowledge on the tutor's part? I do some input <coughs> on, uh, with trainee GPs on working with sexual topics, speaking sexually to their patients. Um, and they're just like us. Or doctors, you know, they don't have any magical extra communication skills. <laughs> Quite the opposite. Quite the opposite. Yes. They, they've often spent their formative adolescent years uh, with their heads in a book trying to get the four A's at A level necessary to get into medical school, where the rest of us were just uh, fooling around growing up. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> Allegedly. Um, but, but I, I think that the uh, willingness or the confidence to speak about sexual matters um, does vary enormously from uh, person to person. I can remember having a, a client who um, was a black client 
And she said, you know, Steph, it's not part of my culture to talk openly about sex. And I thought, actually, dear, it's not about my, not my culture either. <laughs> I didn't say that to her, of course, but I, I thought it. And there aren't many cultures where it is okay to talk openly about sex. Unless, you know, you're doing it ten times a night, swinging from the chandeliers, multi-orgasmic, because that's what everybody is. <laughs> you read certain media coverage. Um, is it not seen as relevant to clients' problems, what's going on in their sex life? Certainly I know that a lot of psychiatric nurses would say that um, the majority of their male clients who present with depression also have problems with their sex lives. And I see nods at the back of the room. That's... Why just at the back? What? Well, <laughs> <laughs> you guys. I'm just at others. <laughs> um, and I think, you know, everyone in this room who's a sexual adult is going to know that when other things are wrong in your life, it's highly unlikely that you've got a really vibrant sex life. If you're stressed, often it's your sex life that suffers as well as other things. So why separate it off? Why say we don't need to talk about it? Does it not fit with the model? Uh, because one thing is for sure, if, if you're wanting to talk about sexual problems with clients, for 90% of them at least, the counsellor is going to have to be the one who brings the subject up. And I say to very new training counsellors, that whatever the your client is presenting with, just one question in your first session will help that client to, tell, to, to know that it's all right to talk about sex. And that one question is, so how's what's happening in your life affected your sex life? I'm not, I'm not putting any judgments on. I'm not saying, oh, well, I know it has. But I am just saying, this is part of your life, and, and how's what's happening affected that side of your life? It's a really good first question. And the longer you leave it, if you're working on a relationship, without mentioning sex, the more unsayable that word becomes. Because you establish a sort of type of relationship with your client where they know and you know that that hasn't been mentioned. And the longer it goes on, they know and you know that it becomes more of a hill to climb to say, um, can I just mention your sex life? And so often it just doesn't happen. Uh, and I guess if you are uh, very person-centred and say that I am going to work from where the client is and allow the client to lead me into a certain direction, they will very rarely lead you in the direction of sex. Uh, unless they have a, a, a bit of a steer. The not in front of the children bit is the, the uh, almost total lack of uh, tr working with ideas about sex in systemic therapy, family therapy. Uh, you know, not in front of the children. Obviously, if you're working with a family, you're not going to be talking about the adults' sex lives in front of the children. but. Family therapy often involves sessions just with the couple, where you may want to look at what's going on between the two of you, as well as, as in the family. But most, most people whose initial training is in family therapy will not